Soon after Clyde Tombaugh unveiled the discovery of Pluto on February 18, 1930, astronomers started to hypothesize that Pluto was not the only object in the farthest reaches of the solar system. They eventually started to speculate about the possibility of further items in the space, which they would eventually find by 1992. A ring of frozen bodies known as the Kuiper Belt contains a diverse collection of thousands of dwarf planets and other relatively tiny objects that reside beyond the orbit of Neptune. These often pristine remnants of the planet-forming phases of our solar system are known as Kuiper Belt objects, or trans-Neptunian objects. In a series of research projects dubbed Guaranteed Time Observations, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope will study a variety of these frozen bodies. The aim is to get more knowledge regarding the formation of our solar system. There aren't many areas in our solar system where objects may last for billions of years, yet these objects are in the graveyard of solar system formation. Astronomers are hoping to discover which ices were there in the early solar system by investigating these asteroids. Scientists are especially interested in comparing these frigid worlds to the planets since they are the least active in terms of geologic and atmospheric activity. Despite being very cold and dim, Kuiper Belt objects shine in infrared light, which has wavelengths beyond the range of human vision. Webb was created particularly to detect infrared light. Scientists will mostly use a method known as spectroscopy to analyze these far-off objects. This approach separates light into its different colors to identify the characteristics of things that interact with that light. Various options. The inhabitants of the Kuiper Belt are diverse in terms of size and form. Others have rings or moons, while others live in couples or multiples. They display a variety of hues, which might signify various creation histories or varying exposure to sunshine. Some seem to be more red, while others are more blue. Why is this? We will be able to learn more about surface chemistry with Webb, which may help us understand why the Kuiper Belt has so many diverse populations. Kicked out of the club. There is a distinct population of objects known as centaurs that is located between Jupiter and Neptune and crosses the orbit of one or more of the big planets. These are tiny bodies that have left the Kuiper Belt and entered the solar system. These web projects will research such solar system entities that have been kicked out of the club, in addition to monitoring existing Kuiper Belt objects. These previous Kuiper Belt objects have had their orbits severely perturbed, which has brought them quite near to the Sun. Centaurs have brief lives because their orbits intersect those of Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn. Therefore, they often only exist for 10 million years. By that time, they have a very powerful contact with one of the big planets and are either hurled into the Sun or are expelled from the solar system. Triton. The moon of Neptune will also be a subject of investigation for Webb. Triton is the biggest of the ice giant's 13 moons, resembles Pluto in many ways. Even though it is Neptune's moon, evidence suggests that it is really a Kuiper Belt object that accidentally approached Neptune in the past and was caught into orbit around Neptune. The Voyager 2 probe examined Triton in 1989. We will use those satellite data as crucial ground truth for our web observations of Kuiper Belt objects. Selection of the targets. A few of the thousands of active and extinct Kuiper Belt objects that Webb will see are listed below. Charon and Pluto. The biggest moon of the dwarf planet Pluto, Charon, is one of the most well-known inhabitants of the Kuiper Belt. Pluto has seasons, a haze, and an atmosphere. Its surface is home to geological activity, while its interior may contain an ocean. Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx are among the four moons that it is home to in addition to Charon. The observations conducted by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft during its 2015 flyby of the Pluto system will be enhanced by the web data. Eris. Eris is the second largest dwarf planet in the solar system is almost as big as Pluto. 
Mysterious Eris is 97 times further from the Sun than the Earth at its farthest point. Although Webb is far away and hence challenging to study, it will reveal a lot to scientists about the types of ices that are present on its surface. Sedna Sedna is dark red in color, is really outside the main Kuiper belt. One orbit lasts around 11,400 years, and the furthest point of that very long orbit is thought to be 940 times the distance of Earth from the Sun. Olmir Scientists are curious as to why this massive, fast-rotating planet is fashioned like an egg. It seems to feature a ring system in addition to moons. Scientists anticipate learning more about the formation of those rings from Webb. Cheriklo In addition to being the biggest centaur, Cheriklo is the first asteroid discovered to contain a ring system. It was our solar system's fifth ring system, following those of Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. It is estimated that the rings are two to four miles wide. If such an alignment happens within the first two years of Webb's existence, another program called the Target of Opportunity will watch a Kuiper Belt object pass in front of a star. This kind of observation, known as an occultation, might show the magnitude of an object. The few spacecrafts that have passed by Kuiper Belt objects have only had a very brief opportunity to explore these fascinating objects. Astronomers can target more Kuiper Belt objects with Webb over a longer period of time. New understandings of the early history of our solar system will emerge as a consequence. The James Webb Space Telescope will explore the fascinating origins and architecture of our universe and our role within it. It will also peer beyond our solar system to faraway planets surrounding other stars. A multinational project called Webb is run by NASA in conjunction with the Canadian Space Agency and the European Space Agency. The Kuiper Belt has provided us with three crucial insights on the solar system. 1. Our solar system is far bigger than we previously believed. In fact, until it was found 20 years ago, we were mostly ignorant of the Kuiper Belt, quite possibly the greatest structure in our solar system. It's almost like not having maps of the Earth with the Pacific Ocean on them until 1992. 2. The positions and orbits of planets may alter throughout time. In rare instances, this even causes whole flocks of planets to migrate. We have solid proof that a huge number of KBOs, including some big ones like Pluto, were born far closer to the Sun, in the zone where the massive planets presently orbit. 3. The creation of minor planets was a skill that our solar system, and probably others, had. The number of dwarf planets in the solar system that we are now aware of exceeds that of gas giants and terrestrial planets combined by more than a dozen. However, it is anticipated that humans will find more than 10,000 dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt and beyond. No one knew. Is there danger in the Kuiper Belt? A large asteroid that slammed the Earth 65 million years ago destroyed roughly 90% of the animals, including dinosaurs. These impacts are uncommon. Thus, there is a 1 in 5,000 chance that Earth will be struck by a huge object during a person's lifetime. We may argue it would result in a worldwide catastrophe. We may consider the Kuiper Belt to be quite dangerous if a huge object from there is on a collision course with us. Even though it's very unlikely, the possibility is still there. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also take a look at some of our other videos. Until next time.